Okay guys, sorry about the last video. It got kind of cut short. I lost some footage, footage at the end here last summer, um, but we're back. We're back to present time. We're February, 2021 now. So I'm going to try to get this video out shortly. Um, we, uh, over the summer, um, like I said, I picked up that Kenworth and I also picked up uh, an end dump here. It's a 36 foot uh, trail star, uh, frameless end dump. Picked it up, I wanted to uh, start picking up some end dump work, some hauling, gravel hauling. Uh, I was gonna kind of pick that up on the side. And uh, so I picked up the trailer, uh, picked it up at an auction, got a pretty decent deal on it. Um, it's actually, it's an 88 model, so it's plenty old, but it's really nice. The tub is really nice on it. It's got a couple little issues here and there, but uh, um, I can deal with it. Um, what's unique about this truck, or this trailer, I'm sorry, is it's super single tires. Um, when I bought it, I'm assuming it was kind of set up for egg use because it had these big super singles on it, big tall super singles, 65 series super singles, uh, 445, 65, 22 fives. Um, I don't mind the tires. The tires are actually really good shape. They're nice tires. Um, and there's six of them on air ride. Uh, the problem is cutting one of them tires and losing one of them tires on the side of the road while you're hauling gravel is going to be really expensive to fix and change because a lot of places will have these used on hand that I can just buy a used tire. Not a lot of places are going to have those used on hand. So um, I swapped them over to the uh, low profile 50 series um, because those are a lot more common. Um, I should have done my homework though because uh, I didn't realize when I bought this trailer that there's a difference between super single axles and regular dual axles. Some trucks run super singles, but they have regular, they have regular axles on them. Um, the, the same, and the axles are the same width as every other truck and every other trailer out there that runs duals. Some trailers and trucks have super single axles on them, which are about an inch and a half to two inches wider on each side of the axle. Um, how to tell them apart is you have wheels that have a center spine in them that where the bolt pattern is where the bolts go and you have wheels that have an offset side and they look deeper dish like these these are deep dish wheels um, so my plan was to just convert this trailer over to duels but I can't do that because if I put duels on this trailer the tires will stick out an inch inch and a half outside the trailer the sides of the trailer so I had to switch all these tires over to my center spine uh, rims, the original rims for the trailer. And what I'm trying, going to do is I'm going to be converting this uh, front axle, air ride axle, to a lift tag axle. Um, but to do that, uh, and I want to, and I'm sorry, and I want to run a regular dually rim. Let me go to the other side, get away from that heater that's making a bunch of noise now. In order to do that, it, or what I want to do is I want to put a regular. Uh, eight and a quarter inch rim and tire on the front because if I happen to cut that tire, it's going to be a lot cheaper to go find a low profile uh, 22.5 tire, a 295 or 275 and put on the front rather than buying a big ass 445 like those. Um, I don't need the width on the front. It's just a tag axle. The, the axle groups are all the same. So, or I, it doesn't matter if I have a, a skinny tire on the front or if I have a big fat tire or duels on the front, it ain't going to matter uh, for uh, uh, licensing and, and uh, weight rating. All they care is that there's a uh, triple axle under there. So, but if I try to put a eight and a quarter rim, regular dually rim on there, and if I turn it out, the rim will stick out an inch and a half outside the rim, uh, the, these tires. Um, and if I turn it in, it'll stick in an inch and a half inside of those tires. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building some spacers out of some old rims, uh, put them in here and uh, I'll be able to space that rim out. It'll still be a little bit narrow, but it'll be a lot better than it was and it should work. Um, I wish I could turn the rim out because I think it looks better that way, but I won't be able to do it. So I'm just going to end up turning the rim in. Um, if I would have known, if I would have known more about the axles and everything like that before I bought this trailer, I probably, nah, I still would have bought the trailer. It's still, it was still a pretty good deal. So, um, but I, w I would have much rather had duels on the back. So 
Like I said, uh, I'm going to be converting this axle into a lift tag. Um, I was intending on just building the system myself, but uh, when I started looking and pricing things out, um, uh, the airbags alone to do the lifts on them are about 100 bucks a pop. Um, so I'm going to have 200 bucks there. Um, the lift kit was like 400. Um, so by the time I bought all the steel, engineered everything, put it together, took it apart, re-engineered it, put it back together again, I'd be I'm money ahead by just buying it. So uh, the problem is I ordered the parts uh, last week, which was right before the big storm hit the south and Texas and Arizona and all those places got uh, smashed by snow. Um, the lift kit was coming out of Dallas. So it's stuck somewhere. I'm not going to end up getting it uh, for probably another week. So um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to be plumbing in all the air system and everything like that. Um, because it had, um, this, this video is actually after I did the work, but it actually had uh, hand controls uh, or manual uh, air controls on the trailer to dump the uh, uh, airbags um, because you have to dump the airbags. Well, you should dump the airbags when you're dumping this trailer. And what it does is the airbags drop and the suspension sits on that stop there. Makes the trailer a lot more stable when it's dumping, when it's up in the air. Um, and it also had an air gate uh, tailgate uh, latch control there. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, putting in uh, electrically actuated solenoids to control all those functions uh, and adding one for the tag axle. So um, my intention was to kind of do all this in one video, but uh, since the parts aren't here, uh, you're going to see me, you're going to see a lot of the uh, installing the uh, uh, electric tag switches or electric uh, air switches for the tag and the dump valve and the and the things and see me struggle a little bit with the wiring and parts and all that kind of stuff so that's gonna be this video so give you kind of an overview of the trailer we got uh, there it has a tarp on it right now but the tarp is absolutely shot um, so that it's gonna be going in for a new tarp here <clears throat> in hopefully the next couple weeks here maybe get some video of that and uh, um, it also, <clears throat> it's going in for a liner. If I can get up here, I'll show you guys what it looks like in here. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't fall. Okay. Um, tub's actually in really decent shape. The only problem is it's worn out in the back. Uh, the sheeting is worn out in the back here. Um, very common with gravel trailers. It's also got a little, couple little cracks there at the front of the suspension. It's hard to see here, but well, you'll see them later when I go over it. Um, I'm not too worried about this crack. I'm going to repair it. I'm going to put uh, some new aluminum in back here and hopefully weld it in, either that or bolt it in. It really doesn't matter to me because uh, I'm going to put a liner in it. So if there's, if I just bolt it in, it's just going to go up over the liner anyways. But it would be nice to weld it in and get it nice and smooth. So if the liner's not in it, it still works. But yeah, um, as you can see, the front uh, cap of the uh, tarp is pretty much smashed down and shot. So. Um, it's got some frame rail damage on the top here, but this is really the only damage the trailer has is that frame rail damage. Um, I guess if somebody went in with a loader and caught it with the bucket. You guys might get to see me fall off and break my neck. Oh, hopefully not. So that's where we're at. Um, first things uh, first, I'm waiting for some parts uh, to turn that uh, tag in, or that uh, front axle into a tag. Um, Hendrickson makes a, a kit to do it, um, so I'll go through that. Um, so there might be, might pick up some more viewers for that because that's there's not a lot on the internet about how to put that on, actual step by step. So I'm going to do that step by step, and uh, get some valves and and controls and everything like that hooked up. And because right now the trailer is. Uh, it's all actually there's a dump valve back here and then the air gate is right here. I'm sorry. I should show you that uh, This is to uh, dump the trailer obviously you should, on uh, These frameless and everything like that you, you're supposed to dump the Dump the air on the suspension. So the suspension comes down and it rides on that that uh, Suspension stop there and what that does is supposed to keep the trailer more stable while you're dumping uh, The problem is there's no cab controls or anything for that. So I'm going to uh, run some electric valves, some electric solenoids back here uh, for the dump valve, for the air gate or the, the tailgate control. And I'm also going to need another one for the uh, tag axle. So I got those valves and 
some boxes and other miscellaneous parts and we're gonna get it done so let's do it okay so we're under the trailer here um, we're gonna start looking at the air system first because I don't have the parts for the tag yet uh, the metal parts and everything to make that a lift tag so uh, I'm gonna start working on doing the controls uh, first um, so if we, we got the front of the tr controls here, we got the axle on the top and the tailgate on the bottom. So if we go around to the back, you got the axle up here and the tailgate here. Um, this is obviously, if you look at the lines, this is obviously the main air supply line coming in. And uh, this would be the uh, line supplying the two valves. Um, this would be the line going out uh, to air up the... Uh, uh, bags and this would be the actually you know what now I'm trying to think because when there's no air it makes the tailgate go off when there is air it goes out so I'm gonna check on that real quick and just make sure I'm doing it right um, but I believe this would be the supplies yeah this will be the supplies for the uh, yeah it should be this will be the supplies to go out to the tailgate and to the axle so I'm gonna take these off um, pull these back obviously pull my main supply off and uh, uh, get these valves out of here. I'm gonna put a whole new box on the front and we're gonna put the valves inside a sealed box so they don't get uh, too dirty because obviously these are very heavy duty mechanical uh, air valves. Um, the other ones are just uh, chintzy uh, Chinese uh, solenoid valves. So I wanna keep them as dry and non-dirty as possible. So we'll get these apart. Okay, can you guys see? Can you see? Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get the lines off first. First of all, uh, I'm gonna label them. And uh, so I make sure I know where they go when I disconnect them. And label them back here, so they're not the way. Gate. I use uh, duct tape because it's the hardest to clean off. I'm lazy and I don't want to keep running back and forth. Oh, that's nice. Let's see. stubborn. That one's being stubborn. Too. In case you guys didn't know, I, well, you probably don't know because I've been pretty good about it, but I kind of swears a lot. There. I try not to on the YouTubes, but <clears throat> kind of in my makeup. Gotta get myself pliers. They're turning, but it doesn't feel good. Uh, yep, anyway. Well, that one turns good. Thank you. 
It's gonna be grinder time. See now if I'm really good at my editing, here's where I'll start to put music in. If I'm not, I'm just gonna turn the volume down so you don't hear. Okay, so we got those out. Now, here's the plan. Got my uh, stuff from the old, ordered directly from my buddy Jeff. Jeff Bezos. Bezos? Bezos? I don't know. I call him Jeff. But I'm gonna use this uh, sealed junction box. Oh, nice plastic screws, I should've known that. Put this up here and uh, we're going to uh, put the little electro thing on my bobs here inside there. Got just enough room for them. And I'm gonna mount those to the back and we're gonna run the lines in, seal them up on the outside and run every, everything, yeah, you know. We're just going to seal them up in there. Okay, since I'm a uh, visual learner and uh, the stuff from Amazon never comes with really good instructions because it's not coming from America. So you can yell at me all you want. Don't blame me up. I'd rather do it with American stuff, but I can't afford half of it. And when I can buy this stuff for a quarter of the price, I know I'm just causing the problem. Anyway, so here we go. Uh, I'm a visual learner, so I had to take and literally draw out how the valves work so this is kind of like this no like this. okay so when the uh when these when these uh valves are on there and you and plug them in when the valve is turned on so you got on there the supply comes in right here and it sends everything through this b port right here and everything from this a port ends up coming through and being vented out through that r port so when you shut it off, the supply goes back to the A port and the B port gets vented out to the S port. So how I'm gonna run it is when I turn my switch on to put the tag down, it's gonna run the air, that's how it sounds like. It's gonna go through the B port and it's gonna, and it's gonna run the tag down. Also at that same time, it's gonna allow the air from the suspension, the airbags, to exhaust out of this R port. So, um, that's the plan. When I shut it off, it's gonna do the exact opposite. It's gonna start airing up the suspension side and it's going to vent the tag out. That's the plan. We'll see how it works. I'm sure these plastic screws will last a long time. Gonna be just great. Anyways. Okay, well, I see we've got some threaded holes in there to, if I wanted to use them, to just put it on there. But the plan is to put these in here. Um, this is just a nut to tighten down the solenoid on top of the on top of the valve body here. So that doesn't really matter. Wires go into here. Uh, plan is to put these in here, put 90s on them, bring them up and bring the wires out in front. So I should have room for three of them. If I play my cards right. And uh, yeah, so. My uh, class B math worked. Um, so I got room for three. Now it's just a matter of getting them mounted. I got to figure out how to mount them through these little mounting holes because he's got these little raised studs in here. So I'll either have to raise them up or I'll have to cut those studs down. So we'll figure it out. Okay, the plan is to uh, put this piece of wood in here. 
I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, I'm going to attach this piece of wood with four screws, and then uh, these solenoids are going to be attached to the wood. And that way, if I need to change anything, I can just take the four screws out of the out of the wood and pull the whole unit out as one. So that's going to be the plan. So the first things first is I got to be able to mark. That'll be actually by leaving this wood and these studs up here, leave me some room for my self tappers that I'm going to use to attach this to the trailer, anyways. Um, so I need to mark these screws, screw holes, screw bungs, or whatever you want to call them, somewhere on this this uh, piece of wood. So I got to figure out how to do that. So here's my plan. What I'm going to do is I want to use these four corners. So I'm going to mark each one of them with a little dab of grease here, a blob here. Could use paint or could use something else, but grease gun was right next to me, so. Okay, and what I did was I just started a screw in there to hold it so I can hold it straight so it doesn't flop around on me. I'm going to get it centered in there. Press down, pull straight up. I should have all four of my corners marked where I gotta drill my holes now. So now it's just a matter of drilling them, tapping them into those little buttons there. find a couple screws this looks like it's gonna be ah there we go taken out and we will uh, mount these suckers. I think actually I'm just going to wood screw them in there because I don't have long enough machine screws that are that small. So there we go. Well, I uh, don't really have enough of the push-in fittings that I really wanted so I'm going to end up having to use these screw on ones which are really really wide. I don't think my box is going to be big enough. I don't think I have enough fittings either, to be honest with you. I know I don't. Looks like a trip to town. Probably have to stay with these like this. Yeah, it's not very well thought out. Not enough room in here. Should have got a bigger box. I'm gonna get that in town somewhere. Is there another way? Damn it. Well, changed plans. Um, uh, that box is not big enough. I see the Home Depots though has one. And so we're gonna go talk to them. How dirty are you? 
Okay. Um, and we're going to go see if we can get one there. It's going to be a lot bigger, but I might change where I mount it. I don't know. So I love uh, living in the country. I just hate having to run for parts out here. So we are going to do that. Well, I'm not going to lie. This kind of makes me happy because it gives me a chance to go and get some breakfast because I didn't have any breakfast. So I'll hop in the Tahoe. Shut that down. Hey, where were we the last time we uh, did this? We just broke 350,000, only 18 payments left. Still runs like a champ. So we're gonna run to the dealership, get some fittings, and run to the Home Depot and get some of that junction box. And then we are going to run to the metal place and get some channel iron because I have to cut that piece of channel off the front of that suspension to put the lift kit on and weld a new one on there. So the uh, uh, Fleet Pride is where I ordered the kit from. It was actually cheaper than ordering it off the internet. So hopefully they, because um, you know I'm cheap, uh, hopefully they uh, get it today with all the weather and everything that the whole country is going through right now. Uh, they said it might be an issue, so they weren't sure. But anyways, I gotta get some new ones too. So. Yeah. Get, get this. Yeah, get this mask off. Okay, so my uh, lift kit, lift axle kit for the uh, trailer, ordered it a week ago. Two of them in the country, one in California, one in Dallas. The counter guy ordered the one out of Dallas, which right now is has more snow than North Dakota does. And the shipping information to UPS sounds like it hasn't even left the store yet. So, probably gonna be another week on the lift kit. This is usually how it goes. Came into town to get the lift kit. Ended up spending way more, mo more money on tons of other crap that I didn't, well, kind of needed, but I didn't need. And went all the way home, realized that the other big thing I needed was fittings that I didn't get. So I had to drive all the way back into town again to get the fittings. $100 worth of fittings to, to plumb this all up. So back home, let's get working on it, maybe, before the kids come home. Okay, this is how much I love you guys. Um, so, I went into town to get all my stuff and didn't have my stuff. So, ended up buying a bunch of other stuff. In the meantime, uh, my front screen on my GoPro broke. So, I figured what better time than to try to replace your front screen on your GoPro than in the middle of trying to record a uh, video. And I broke my GoPro. So, I went on the Facebooks and found somebody that uh, is selling a GoPro three because that's what I'm shooting everything on is a three that's why it's bad but I'm upgrading and I'm, but I'm waiting for my new one should be here next week um, so now I'm on this old crappy camera that I bought on a Black Friday sale I think I've talked about it before and um, it sucks but this is what I got right now so we're gonna finish what we're doing here tonight I'm gonna pick up another camera tonight and then I'll get the new camera next week and hopefully we'll be in a better situation so um, where are we okay go look at my boxes here. This is the new box I got. Much bigger than the old box that I got. Um, I wish it wasn't as deep. I don't mind the size. I just wish it wasn't as deep because I was intending on mounting it right where those old switches were. Right, let's do this one-handed here. Right here. But it literally sticks out wider than the trailer, and I don't want it to get caught on something. And it looks kind of weird being all bulbous and sticking out like that. So what I think I'm going to do is stand by and get a camera. Whatever. What I'm planning on doing is taking the box and actually mounting it under here. I'm kind of mounting it behind the spare tire here in this location because the spare tire will help keep the box protected from any rocks. Throw it back by the drive wheels in the truck. Um, and it'll keep it accessible. What I also think I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a couple of just electric switches here. So if I ever pull this truck with a different, or this trailer with a different truck, I can still actuate the uh, 
I'll put a hotline going in there, and I'll still be able to actuate the solenoid there um, to keep them or to make them work. Um, to have, uh, that trumpet and that the right wiring the same way I was uh, when I'm going to wire my trumpet. So there we are. That's probably the plan. So first things first, I'm going to get the uh, solenoid mounted up in the uh, on on the board that's going to go in here. And get all the wires strung and get, or not wires strung, but the lines, uh, airline strung, and get them ready to uh, be hooked up. Then we'll the box up here. There's supplies and our returns uh, plumbed in there, and we'll plug everything in. We'll so probably give it a bench test here. Uh, I'll fill the trailer up with shop air and uh, keep my electric switches working. So, okay, it's probably a little bit of a blessing in disguise um, that uh, that box was too small. Um, so I'm going because I'm going to end up mounting all my wiring and my wiring uh, uh, junction box and my regulator, air regular, uh, air regulator for the uh, tag axle in here. So mounting piece and everything here. Um, so that's going to be the plan there. So I should have plenty of room to do that. Um, plenty of room to mount all this stuff and still have room to get the airlines and everything plumbed up and over so we'll get that done hopefully yeah so um, I did buy a bunch of push pull fittings like I said these 100 bucks were the fittings for these suckers uh, so yeah we'll uh, save these from my emergency box still and You know, I assembled all these and I put these little exhaust things on there, but I have a feeling that, you know, the air systems usually get oily and all that kind of stuff. Now we keep exhausting all that stuff into this box and it's just going to fill this box up and get it dirty. So I might as well put fittings on there to tie those into, into a single exhaust line on here that goes out of the, out of the box. I didn't really think when I bought all my 90 degree elbows that I would be able to put them all on on here, so a lot of money on elbows that I didn't need. So when I started this, I basically, I only have one two-way valve um, that's going to be the tag axle and the suspension. So when the tag axle comes on, it'll shoot it over to here. And when I switch back to the tag axle off, it'll push the pressure back to fill up the suspension airbags. So I started putting all these uh, uh, solenoids together thinking that I was, you know, all of them are going to be two-way, but really they're not, not all of them are going to be two-way. Really, most of them are just, or two, both of them, two of them are going to be one-ways, and one of them is going to be two-ways. So this one really just needs a, the inlet and the outlet and then an exhaust, so I can cap that and cap that. Same thing, that's for the suspension dump, and same thing for the tailgate. It's going to be just a supply uh, to the airbag and then an exhaust, and the rest of these can be capped. So... I don't have to worry so much about these 90 degrees that are coming in and, in and out of here. So I'm going to try to arrange these so in a manner that won't kink my hoses too much and go from there. I have all the uh, solenoids in there uh, placed temporarily with some wood screws in there. i got to get some machine screws to put in there yet. Um, but now I'm going to start running the, uh, the air lines for it. Um, so I've got some flexible air line here. Kind of get a go from there. I got all the exhausts run here so far. It's not super pretty. Um, I thought I had 3 8 airline, but I don't have any 3 8 airline. So one more trip into town. Um, I could probably start wiring this before I do that. Maybe I'll just go into town over lunchtime. That way I can grab some lunch and everything too. So I'm gonna go grab my junction boxes for that and then uh, go from there. So. So rather than, I was going to try to mount this in here, but it takes up a lot of space. So I'm going to mount it on the side here so it's accessible from the outside. So if I want to add lights 
That way if I want to, because I'm only going to be using three, three outlets on this uh, it's a seven outlet trailer uh, junction box. So I'm only going to be using three outlets right now because I'm spitting everywhere um, for the uh, three air valves that are in there right now. So I, I'll still have three other ones after I get it rid of the ground. I'll still have three other uh, posts here that I can use for lights or for uh, other things if I need to use them. Because I'm going to run all seven wires in. So that way I'll have seven wires coming back. So in the future I might want to hook these up to something. So um, for right now, um, we're going to... Uh, um, just use these three and then go from there. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire these, all the solenoids up, and I just drilled a hole in here to go into the box here so it should be nice and sealed. And then um, wire them in. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I got all the uh, wires wired up in the uh, terminal box here. And I'll leave the box down and I'm run into here. Zip tie together nice. I'll probably put another zip tie right there maybe. Um, now I just got to get my uh, 3 8 airline and start running that. The only one I'm worried about is this one because it's going to have to make a kind of a tight bend there, but it should make it there. I do have to fix this one. I saw I broke that one already. So that's not a good start. Finally got all the wiring, uh, everything situated in the box. Uh, so now I have my tag axle, my dump valve, and my air gate all wired up. 212 volt coming in. I still got to run a wire, and I should have. I kind of screwed this up because the wire is going to come in now. I'm going to have to route all the wire around this post. I should have run it that way. Either that, or I can run it. Actually, I really screwed up because I'm going to run the wire right. Pass my switch there. That's not cool. Or I can actually I can just run it in right there. Anyways, so we uh, I got all the 12 volt switches hooked up. Um, I tried finding uh, rubber covers for these, but the ones I got were wrong. So I'm gonna try and find some other ones to just keep them a little more weatherproof. So now I'm just gonna try to get the 3 8 line in there. Put my T's in there so the air supply can go in and go from there. So. So I got the box all built and done. So it doesn't really look super pretty inside there, but it should work, I hope. So I'm going to put it up on the trailer and I can test it because I got, I got 12 volt switches here. We'll see if it works. Well there, the hardest part is over actually, just mounting the box up there. So 
won't be so bad. It'll be accessible. It'll be a little protected by the spare tire there. I think I might actually hang, hang a mud flap right here just to keep rocks from hitting it. Luke's over here doing his own YouTube channel. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. What's your channel name? My channel name is Vice Grip Lucas Garage. <laughs> Big Vice Grip Garage fan over here. Okay, so we're going to get plumbing and we'll give it a test run. I got to get... Oops, I'm like sire. Um, I gotta get my uh, lines, put unions in my lines here. I hit a rock, buddy. I hit a rock with the chair. So I'm just gonna cut these. Next to each other. So oh, I got everything hooked up. I didn't have a plug to uh, plug off my air suspension on my tag, so I just melted a hose and I just uh, joined it there. So Luke's over there doing his own YouTube videos. I left the tag line exposed so I could tell if it's actually pushing air out. So we're gonna try to uh, put some air to the system. I'll show you my little system here. I got, uh, just put a glad hand on a, <laughs> on a uh, air chuck. So, fill the trailer up. Okay, so I got everything working. Um, the only problem is my suspension dump is operating backwards so I'm gonna have to try to figure out what to do um, Yep, I'm going to have to change that solenoid around. I'm going to take that solenoid out, change the fittings on it, put it, change the exhaust and all that's on it. But the, uh, I got whipped in the face three times testing the uh, tag axle because the tag axle line is off here. So when I put the switch on in the cab, and what it's going to do is it's going to dump the tag suspension and turn the tag, this, this will blow air. So it's not on, it has to be on all the time, making a draw on the battery. Um, got to run the wiring now. I'm going to tie the wiring with the uh, regular trailer wiring, but the problem is there's no, I can't get it. The trailer wiring is run through the draft bars in this trailer, and I can't uh, get in there. There's not enough room for me to get in there, so I have to run the wiring outside of the draft bar. So I've already punched a couple of holes. I've got some wire looms in the wire uh, saddles here that hopefully are big enough to get one of these things. And some screws to get to it. Well, since we're out of parts, um, I was able to get all the uh, air system done until, the, until I get to the tag. I was able to actually get um, my switches in there. I put my little stickers on there to, get, to uh, uh, show everybody what it was. Um, everything functions and works. I did have that one. For some reason, that one solenoid runs backwards. I don't know why, but it works fine now that I re, re, or re uh, uh, changed the ports on it. 
um, works really good. I was able to get all the wiring in and uh, run um, up the side of the trailer over here. And I have it sitting out the front right now because I want to get a good measurement once I get the tractor up. But got the wiring run down the uh, draft bars and up over into the fifth wheel plate. Uh, something, if you guys aren't familiar with, uh, uh, something's kind of interesting. If you guys aren't familiar with uh, frameless end dumps, frameless, frameless end dumps have a pivot, and I can't really show you there, have a pivoting fifth wheel on it. Fifth wheel pivots up and down because when the trailer is raised, uh, these draft bars end up start, the, the draft bars raise with the trailer and they pivot right here in the middle. So, as I was saying, as my battery died on my camera again, new camera coming in two days. So, just sit tight. As I was saying before, uh, the fifth wheel plate on uh, frameless trailers pivot so the draft bars can go up with the trailer and, and come up at an angle. Um, because that fifth wheel plate pivots, the fifth wheel on the truck has to stay stationary, otherwise you'll end up banging around and the trailer will move around on you. So I had to solidify or put in some temporary s supports to uh, make the uh, uh, fifth wheel on the truck uh, stationary. So, and I'll show you that stuff in another episode. Once we get the truck back in here to hook this up to see if everything works, I'll show you all that. Um, but, um, I'll, and I'll explain all that. So anyways, you got to see the finished uh, product here. Um, sent some out of parts to finish the uh, tag axle. I think we're going to call this episode done. Um, I think uh, I really want to appreciate you for watching again. And I, it's kind of fun. It's nice to be back. It's nice to be uh, doing this again and, and kind of getting off my butt to do it. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into this and a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of editing, a lot of sitting in front of the computer waiting for stuff to, to load, uh, that kind of stuff. But, um, and when you got two little boys and a wife and a job and all that kind of stuff, it gets it really starts to weigh on you. But I really enjoy doing this and I kind of, I like the camaraderie. Um, plus I've been watching a lot of other YouTubers and um, in, in my off time and it's been giving me the bug to get back into it. Um, on that same note, um, I kind of want to try to, I want to try to be a little more entertaining and do some stuff to make some people laugh, that kind of stuff, because that's usually my personality. The problem is when people start watching YouTube, they start emulating other YouTubers and I don't really want to be that guy. So, um, I don't want to copy anybody, but there's a lot of good, funny people out there and good content and everything like that. So uh, if you guys ever see me doing something that's, that you think is plagiarism, let me know. But it's not really intentional, I guess, but, but whatever. So until next time, uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe. Um, we got this project to continue going. I got a tarp to put on it. I got a liner to put in it. Um, I've got some other... Uh, piddly little things I got to get done to it and uh, keep watching um, once we get this out uh, I'm going to try to get the uh, cab over back in the, uh, Pete and we're going to continue working on that there's a lot of stuff to do on that there's so much stuff to do on that so a uh, ton of content coming up so hit subscribe hit the little bell to let you know when the new videos come out um, make sure to uh, uh, check back on my old videos if you haven't watched them um, it was a little rocky at the beginning we uh, but we got things going and started to uh, Started to catch fire there for a while until I got lazy and didn't want to YouTube anymore. So I'm back now. So let's keep going. Thanks for watching.